Welcome to the Management Advantage. Y'all, today we're going to be talking about clear-cut management. Now the public perception of a clear-cut, in a lot of cases, it is an eyesore that is completely void of any wildlife uses. And that's simply not the case if it's managed properly. So on today's show, I'm going to be joined by Michelle Eisenberg from BASF. And we're going to be talking about a new site prep chemical from BASF called One Step. And we're going to show you how proper usage of this chemical can not only produce a fantastic timber stand in this clear cut, but also abundant wildlife food. So stay tuned and we'll be back in a moment. Dodge presents the management advantage, gaining the advantage through proper land management with your host, Chuck Sykes, who is dedicated to sound wildlife management practices and principles that will help both sportsmen and landowners get the optimum potential from their land. Sponsored by Plotmaster, BASF, the Whitetail Institute of North America, Horton Vans, Motorola, Kershaw Knives, and EasyGo. Well, Michelle, before we get into the actual site prep techniques using One Step, I guess the first thing that you need to tell everybody is what One Step is. I've always used Arsenal and Chopper for my site prep needs until you sent me this drum of One Step last year. So what is it? Well, to answer your question, well, why we have used Arsenal and Chopper in the past and One Step now, Arsenal and Chopper is the same active ingredient as appear. And what BSF did last year is they took that active ingredient, amazapir, and combined it with two quarts of glyphosate to come up with a product named One Step. And what One Step is, is the equivalent rate of 20 ounces of arsenal and two quarts of glyphosate. And the reason that BSF did that is because we wanted a uh, one gallon per acre rate for landowners to basically select that herbicide and put on almost any site that they have and get a very broad spectrum control of the majority of the hardwood species that are out there. All right, I know what glyphosate is. A lot of people may not, but just to give you all the background on glyphosate, that's the active ingredient that's found in Roundup. Roundup is used to kill everything. The reason I've been using Chopper and Arsenal is because Amazapir is species selective. It will not take out my wildlife food. Now, I'm setting you up for this because that's going to be the first question that people are going to ask. I know what it's going to do, but you had to sell me on it. So you've got to tell everybody why putting that two quarts of glyphosate in there is not going to counteract what they're wanting to do by producing their wildlife food. Sure. And just as I mentioned to you earlier about the two quarts of glyphosate that we're putting out per acre in with this tank mix, it's truly not enough glyphosate to negatively impact our wildlife habitat that we have out here. What the landowner is getting is the benefit of additional hardwood species control that a mazapir may not pick up. But when we go and look at our site today, we're going to look at abundant wildlife that has come back after two quarts of glyphosate. Again, the rate is not high enough. Um, to impact our wildlife habitat. And when we look at the timing of it, we sprayed it last August. And we, here we are around the 9th of May, and we've got a lot of good wildlife food that has come back up on this site. All right, y'all, before we go look at the clear cut that was sprayed, if you'll notice this ribbon right here. We're standing right in the edge of it. This ribbon was used as a buffer for our pilot when he was airily applying the chemical. This is what this clear cut would look like and our landowner's objective is twofold. He wants good timber and wildlife food. If the whole clear cut looked like this, you got too much competition for your pine stand and you got too much competition for your wildlife food. That's right. So this, y'all keep this in the back of your mind. When we go to this clear cut, this is what this would look like if it hadn't been sprayed. Now this clear cut was sprayed last August. Like Michelle said, we're in May and you'll be astounded at the way it's gonna look now. All right, our first step in getting this clear cut back productive was we came in in August with a helicopter and did an aerial application of one step. And we followed up in December because one of the major questions that landowners are gonna have is, I applied this chemical. I rode by and my sweet gums look good. They're brown just like they're supposed to. But some of those oaks, I think you missed it or the product didn't work. So what we did is we came back out and you can see right here where we broke the limbs off. 
we looked at it to see that that product was actually working. So, I mean, I know this happens all the time. Sure. It's a real common phenomena that when you spray, some of your species will brown quicker than the others. Like the sweet gum. Absolutely. And it will take, on average, six to eight weeks to even see activity occurring in your plants. Um, some of the things that you can look for to ensure that activity is occurring is that the very growth, the, what we call is the meristematic region, which is the growth region of your plant. Which is the last the, the four last, or five inches on the stem. Correct. Here. You'll start to see um, your leaves getting real small or starting to brown there because that's where the product goes through because it's translocated throughout the plant, through the roots, and throughout uh, your stems. And what you can do is you can go in and break them over just like what we did to look in the inner parts of your plant in your Cambrian region to see if they're starting to turn brown. And that's what you really want to do. Another common phenomena that landowners will also see is that you get budding um, the just following like that. spring that we've got here. Uh, if this tree was going to actually make it through, uh, being that it's the 9th of May, you would already have leaves forming on your tree, and clearly it's not on this. So we can look at this now after the fact and know that the product did indeed work. So a couple of things that you need to hold in the back of your head. We sprayed in August. The sweet gums and everything are going to turn quick. Within usually three weeks or so, those sweet gums are already shriveling up. But your real waxy cuticle plants like water oaks, for example, like this one was, they're going to hold on. They're going to look fine. So before you call your applicator or call Michelle and say your product didn't work, just take the time to walk out here, break this limb off like we did, and you can look, and there will be a little black or brown vein running all the way down where you can see that that chemical is going down into the roots. Then when you come back in the spring and you see the little buds, just break your little piece off and you'll tell that the product has done exactly what it's going to do. So now we have eliminated our hardwood brush. So we've made it a whole lot more conducive to plant our pine trees. So we came in in December and we planted it. So now we've got a good stand of pines out here. So we have completed the landowner's first objective. We've made a proper site for timber production. That's now great. we're going to go out in here and show you how quickly all this wildlife food comes back and colonizes after a proper site prep. It's amazing how much stuff comes back and I agree I was skeptical about the glyphosate. That scared me. But what you had said held true. All it did was just aided them as a peer. It did not, I mean it didn't take out any of our wildlife food. Look at Look at all this. It's, it couldn't be any better. And y'all, if you're saying that a clear cut won't produce wildlife food, if y'all just watch this for a few minutes, you're gonna see all the insects all over. You couldn't get any better nesting and brood rearing habitat for quail and turkeys. And we've also got a ton of forage in here for deer. Absolutely. We've got all kinds of flowering plants that are out here. You've got dewberry, blackberry, all kinds of the really good herbaceous material that animals are attracted to. This is, this is very good wildlife habitat. Something key to note about this site that's usually done after a lot of site preps is usually a burn. And there we was not a bur burn. That's it right. Was, it was too wet this year. So one thing that, that the One Step did, a lot of times to get rid of the, the waxy cuticle plants, you need to come in with a burn behind it. Well, the One Step took care of it because it was so wet this year we couldn't burn. So the site was not prepared as intensively as we usually do, and it still did a wonderful, wonderful job producing quality wildlife food. That's right, and a lot of folks don't realize that there's this native seed bed that exists in our soil that if you can just get light to it, it's going to come up. And that's what's really amazing about this. And just as you opened the show and talked about folks' perception of site prep and of forestry and of clear cuts, and what really comes back after you clear cut and plant a site is awesome. Well, it's stuff, like you said, that's been in this seed bank laying here the way it originally should have been. And then timber practices over the years have taken away the pine grassland sites and made it into a mixed pine hardwood site that's not really native to this area. That's correct. So once you get sunlight in here, all of this seed that's been laying there for years has got a chance to come back out. And granted, this is not the prettiest thing in the world because you've got sweet gum skeletons standing out here. Sure. But it's an effective timber management tool and a truly effective wildlife management tool using patch clear cuts. And 
just get off of the wildlife. We're just talking, if we're just doing timber, I mean, look at that little pine right there. This little guy has got little or no competition to do what that landowner needs it to do, and that's grow and make him money. That's right. There's not a lot of grasses around here that's impacting him. It's just a lot of what we call broadleaf weeds, that that's what's important for wildlife. So there's little to no impact on him for competition. He can get all the water, nutrients, and light that he can get, and they're gonna, he's going to come up. So again, we're going back. We're um, completing the landowner's objective, uh, which is which number is one. Which is key. Which is key, is growing the timber. Uh, as quickly as he can with little to no competition and getting a good wildlife habitat area out here for him to come out and view wildlife or to hunt it. Alright folks, now that we've given you this simple and easy prescription on site prep to produce quality timber and quality wildlife, we're fixing to give you the proper prescription to catch a trophy alligator. Last September uh, we went with Michelle's boss, David Hopkins, and Tracy Weems, one of her counterparts over in Louisiana, on an alligator hunt. I had never been on one before, and I promise you, it won't be the last time, so y'all are in store for a good one. Dude, yep. just go along the edge of that, that weed there, and you take these poles and job them in the... And that's what we're going to hang our chicken off of, you see. All right. David, I believe we'll go back to the bank out there, don't you? All right, we're in business here. I said, what I've done is hook these chickens with the hooks, and they've been sitting for about two days, so they are really right. You want these rubber gloves to keep that chicken <laughs> smell off of you because it stays with you. So that's not disguising human odor no, from the alligator, I'm not huh? Find, find, find. Find is wine. Oh man, that'll be about a let's see, eight foot ten inches. <laughs> That's right. That was a nice, nice cast. Tracy, what time of day are you going to come back and run these? Right after daylight? Yeah, right at, you know, after daylight, good. You don't want to run them early in the morning. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be back in just a minute. Hopefully, we'll show you alligator on one of these chickens. Welcome to this week's Outfitting 101 segment. Y'all, what we want to focus on today is a question of references. Most important thing, in my opinion, that you can do before you send your money to an outfitter is make darn sure he can provide you with a quality set of references. Any outfitter that you talk to, they're going to tell you that their place is a place for you. But you need to talk to customers that have been there, those that have been on hunts where they've taken game, as well as people that have been on hunts where they did not take game. You can talk to them and then form your own opinion if that is a place for you. If that outfitter will not provide you with a list of references, you don't need to go there. Now let's see how Water Valley addresses this question. Well, when you either send an email or you call and get Pia on the phone, they have quality references that they can give you. They've got names of hunters that have taken game and ones that have not that you can talk to and then you can form your own opinion to see if Water Valley is a place for you. And next week we're going to wrap up our Outfitting 101 segment. So get your pens and paper ready because we're going to have some more quality information that you're not going to want to miss before you book your next hunt. We'll see you then. What can I do, Tracy? Nothing. Paddle. Debbie'd be proud of you. Alligator, alligator! He's right there. Wait, yeah, they'll just stay hooked. He's tangled up. All right, get him right there, 20 out.
Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Just hold up. Just hold up. That's a young one. You got it. You ain't gonna shoot him no more. That yeah. Miss Joe made a shot on about a six, seven footer right in the right spot. <laughs> He nailed him. Mr. Joe Huntington with Plum Creek killed his first alligator. Yep. These are private tags, alligator tags. We get, we get one for every 100 acres of wetland that the NRCS office considers. And we've got 247 acres of wetland. We've got two tags, and in the last two years, they started giving you a bonus tag. They want you to keep one six foot or under because most people turn back to six foot or under. So you can keep it above six foot, but they would like for you to keep it six foot and under. So we've got three right tags. There. He, all right. He's right there. Well, that's what I told David. we got to go another six foot boat length. All right, Inch, you ready? Yep. Set, go. <laughs> Set, go. Ready? Set, go. Hit him right there, David. How wide is he? Well, that, that ain't no metal right there, partner. No. Get let him go. Let him go. Well, you let him go. Come on, get up here. Where is There's his head, right there. All right. Oh. Ho. Oh. No, I don't. Hey, David, don't hit the boat. He's down. He's down for the count, That'd boys. Good thing, boys. You know, y'all, what you see is head. You start well, shooting. We on Horseshoe Lake and we got every bit of about a 12 foot alligator here. I'm telling you, I've caught 11 foot 4, 430, and this is going to top that one. I got him up tight. He... Folks, on today's show, we gave you a simple and easy recipe to use for all your site prep. We also carried you on an outstanding alligator hunt. It was my first one, and I can promise you it won't be my last. If you've got questions about One Step, Chopper, Arsenal, or any other BASF product, just get on their website at forestryfacts.com and they can answer all your questions. Folks, this is just one more way that we're helping you gain the advantage through proper management. We'll see you next week right here on The Management Advantage. The Management Advantage. Presented by Dodge was brought to you by Plotmaster, BASF, the Whitetail Institute of North America, Horton Vance, Motorola, Kershaw Knives, and EasyGo.